Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Let's Debate, where I select a topic, put it on my community tab in YouTube, you respond with your hot, spicy takes, upvote the most controversial ones you want to see me respond to, and then we jump on into a debate. And this episode, we're going to be talking about... <laughs> Religion. Yes, religion in the fantastical or sci-fi genre, which is going to be quite the little talk. I want to remind people that nothing here is meant to be offensive. I'm not trying to attack anybody. I'm just giving my opinions and you're welcome to disagree just as I am welcome to disagree with you. I say that because there's going to be a little bit of competitiveness here for this one after looking through some of the responses. I'm just going to be honest. This, this one's going to be a little bit of a punch punch. It's going to be a little bit of a punch 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 punch. So, hey, we can still be friends. We can still disagree. That's allowed. But we have the big question though. What weird, wacky, wild, zany object am I gonna put my mic to for this religion debate? A sword? No, no, no. A skull! Haha! -ha! Skull face. Why? Because, um, I don't know. Just, I just thought it'd be a good one. It's a good looking skull. It's handsome. He's nice. Looks, looks, like, looks like he would take care of you. I just want everyone to know, no matter what happens here, we're still friends. Now, jumping into the first hot take. I don't like real slash active gods in fantasy worlds. It just makes everything a little too easy for me. I like numerous religions in a fantasy world, and I like them in the background and used in a way to explain and explore the magic. Are you saying you don't like Aslan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's fixed. <laughs> I'm tired of atheists being written as cold, logic-driven, and some sort of scientist, as if atheism automatically makes you devoid of expression or handling human emotions, or thinking logically makes you cold and unfeeling. It's exhaustively overwritten, and they make me roll my eyes and wince. I will say there is some excuse for this. I mean, we see examples in the real world of people who are very vocally atheists and they make their entire personality being like logic and reason. And those people are totally fun at parties. Uh, but as someone who is not very religious, uh, I can say, yeah, and not, not all atheists are like that. And it's kind of obnoxious, but I would say there's, there's more tact for this um, in sci-fi. I think I actually find more and more examples in the well-written sci-fi of atheists who are very respectful or religion or spiritual spirituality as a whole, and some of them are very in touch with their emotions. I would say this is more of a problem with fantasy, and I also hate that when, especially in fantasy, these people who are like against the gods or whatever are always pasted as like brilliant. I know plenty of atheists who are dumb. I know plenty of religious people who are dumb. Stupidity knows no creed. It goes with any group. Every single group of people in the planet, if it's more than like four people, has idiots. It's just true. You can be smart in one facet of life and an idiot in another. So, yeah, it, idiots are everywhere. Idiots plague us. And I'm an idiot. You're an idiot. We're all idiots in some ways. I very much so believe that. I'm not trying to attack anybody. There are many stories where magic was discovered so long ago that there are full-blown magic systems in place for it. Religions are formed around this system, but a question that's always fascinated me is, what if magic just all of a sudden appeared in today's world? What type of conflicts would arise in the world if already existing religions witnessed the appearance of magic or an astral realm? Would there be religious schisms? Would scholars look for evidence of their faith or mythologies? Would they even be able to control the great and horrifying potential of magic? How would they deal with the potential of fantasy creatures coming in? Knowing how greedy humanity is, would the public even be informed about the discovery of magic? I'd love to see a story that explores these questions in a mysterious way. So many curiosities and so many possibilities. This isn't, this isn't a hot take. This is, this is a story pitch. It's got upvoted a bunch. Okay, someone go write this. I think way too many authors fail to consider how religions would work if their gods are constantly operating in the world and through agents in easily falsifiable ways. In fantasy, often the gods have A, things they want done in the world, and B, means to directly communicate with people. If you're having trouble deciding what the church doctrine is, you can cast a quick commune spell to check in with your god and get a FAQ. <laughs> God damn. What? Yo, 
big fan. Uh, what are the ingredients exactly for this for this curse? It's not a good time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm, yeah, I, I get. It. I get it. Four toad eyes, three maple leaves. Don't call me again. God, anything. What? Hey, I just I just wanted to say sorry for uh, summoning you like that. So I just brought you here. Well, okay. Look, just just don't do it again. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, all right. Yeah, I won't. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I won't do it again. Only okay. call yeah, me if that, it's like this, this dying. My bad. Shouldn't have done this. All right. I'm literally a god. I got better things to do. Oh, I'm gonna kill him. I swear to God. Oh, it was three rabbit eyes, not toad eyes. And everyone else in your faith can independently verify your claim. So there's way less room for disagreement. That's entirely different from how theological disputes work in real life. Religions would be so much more homogenous, and religious conflicts would be less like, our gods are real, yours aren't, and more like, our gods are better than yours, and your religion sucks, and we want rid of it. Wow, it's kind of funny how you're like, no, there'd still be religious conflict, and people would fight over it. And you're right, they would. That would. That, we, we love conflict as humanity. Isn't that sad? Of course, you have gods lying and otherwise deceiving their disciples in other ways, but when you have magic granted directly by gods and gods that reliably talk to their followers, religions would be so, so different from how they are often presented. And I feel like faith would be way less of an important concept given the gods would be easy to uh, empirically verify for skeptics. So this was an interesting point because it caused discussion uh, in the replies below it. And and the, the replies were pretty pretty insightful, if I remember correctly. And they brought up a really good point of like, just because gods exist doesn't mean they can commune with humans in a very like, we can understand it way. What if their communication is beyond our understanding? There can still be conflict driven in this manner. And I think that's a really, really good point. And it kind of undercuts your first bit there where it's like, oh, you can't just call up a god and be like, hey god, uh, what did you mean by this thing? And then the god's like, oh, I meant like, do it like this, not like this. So, sorry, I wrote it kind of vague. Like that wouldn't be a thing as much if you do have gods that are more in this like, indirect ethereal sense of they can't communicate directly with us or you can go like the more dresden route and the gods are like pretty like what's up dude you, you need you need to talk and they actually can like even sometimes speak our modern slang so it kind of depends on the concept behind them so you you're not wrong there's just a different form of like how you could conceive a god to be and i just want to reiterate please make more gods that lie to their disciples that's one of my favorite like story beats and i enjoy it now we're gonna get into the things that I disagree with a bit more. Yay, yay. I think a lot of people's views of religions are way too simplistic. It's either religion bad or religion good. The most complicated you often see are the tropes like good religious person who's misguided or zealots with a tragic backstory. I'd like to see more serious engagement with the complexities of religious beliefs in individuals, such as doubt, temptation, abuse, and forgiveness. It would also be interesting to see the nuances of religion between religions instead of just religious wars. While it's certainly true many wars have been fought over religion, dialogue between faith is also common through history and leads to unexpected alliances. It would be interesting to see how characters of different faiths interact with each other and how this reflects broader trends in the world. Dune is a great example of fantasy slash sci-fi wor work that deals with religion and faith in ways in that is complex, serious, without being preachy. Frank Herbert clearly did his research, which is one of the many things that makes the book Great. Just read Dune, y'all. I actually almost done rereading Dune right now. I think I've like a little bit left. And you're right. It's a very distinct like pillar of how people could do religions in this approach. The reason I'm going to push back though on this is you're saying it in a way where it's like everyone should do this in this way. And I just don't like the specific phrasing of that because that's not really fair. I think it's absolutely fine for an author, for the narrative they're trying to serve, to have a more simplistic view of religion if it's not necessarily the focal point of the story they're trying to tell. If they're not trying to tell a nuanced debate around religion, it's okay to pull back. You know, authors can't handle every single thing with nuance in an entire fantasy epic they're crafting. Even the most well-fleshed out fantasy worlds ever have not done that in every single category because it's just not feasible. So I agree that it would be a more accurate or a more real to the world depiction of how religions interact with each other more often than not because religions don't 
always go to war with each other or have conflict. Um, we even see have great alliances in the past where religions have come together to fight a common enemy, and that's okay. And even today in the world, we're seeing different religious groups protect each other from zealots. Usually people in the middle ground for religions are actually like more cooperating with the other religion that are in the middle ground than the people who follow their faith that they actually agree with, but are zealots. No one likes a religious zealot. Don't be a religious zealot. But I do want to make the point that you don't have to do this, and it kind of seems like you're phrasing it a little bit that way, and that I disagree with. And we're going to see this point brought up again soon. Religious people that aren't all cult members and zealots. I actually don't think this is as big as an issue as people think. Like, yes, there are a lot of examples of, like, religious zealots and cult members in fantasy, but I think more often than not, the reason it's not discussed in the way that a lot of people think it needs to be is let's look at many fantasy worlds that have, like, oh, like people have talked about before in this video, the gods exist and there's magic. People know this is the case. Well, then you don't really have much discussion about religion because everyone's just pointing at one faith and going like, that's the truth, so just go that way. Lord of the Rings is a phenomenal example. There's not a lot of people going about their day-to-day -day life discussing like the ups and downs of religion because everyone knows what is to be true and what is not because you can go and just find the magical people. You can be like, oh, hey, Gandalf, you're an angel and you're the one who can tell me this is all right. Like, that's the reason you're not going to have like a lot of nuanced discussion of the middle ground. And then in other fantasy worlds where you have zealots, they're often the people who just take what most people's average everyday faith is and then they pull it to an extreme. Wheel of Time is an example of this where you have the white cloaks. They are religious zealots, but they're only taking what the average everyday religion is and blowing it up. Um, and so there are the normal middle ground people in that series. I think this seems to somehow be a bigger problem than it is because the focus of the narrative isn't often on just the middle of the road average believer in the sense of exploring their faith because of the other things people have mentioned here where there wouldn't be a whole lot of like faith-based discussion. It's just like, no, this is true. We can just point over at that and that's, we know that's the case. So eh. if you have Aes Sedai walking around using the magic that we know is powered by the creator and all this stuff, there wouldn't be much of a narrative point unless you're going to focus on the zealots, who are going to be the only ones you can pull easy conflict from, or the big baddies, which you can also make like a, a case that the people on the other side serving the Dark Lord and stuff are, are zealots in their own right. I do want to clarify that I am focusing on typical mainstream commercially viable fantasy that even in the aftermath of the self-publishing boom hasn't resulted in fantasy that's like super hyper philosophical focus like you would see in some more like classic sci-fi or even some modern sci-fi. So I'm sure sure this exists, there is fantasy that would benefit narratively from having a very nuanced discussion about an established lore, mythology, religion, what have you. But in general, if you're looking for like the things that are going to be hitting top bestseller lists, the things that everyone's have read, you're not going to find this necessarily because it's just not where you're going to see that benefit pay off. I'm sure it does exist in some books that have been commercially viable. Look in the comments, people are going to be pointing them out, but it's just not what's going to typically happen even in less action-packed stuff because even the less action-packed stuff needs to pull from extremes to find stakes in narrative. It's just kind of how all this works. So I think this problem is almost like an inevitable result of authors who want to have a unifying faith in their world, but don't necessarily want to make the focus of their narrative around a deep religious discussion. What you end up with is, yeah, the religion's not really discussed, it's just a fact of life, and the only people who stand out to the reader will be these crazed extremists because, you know, they're the ones you can actually get some narrative tension from. Not 100% on. I think there could be some decent pushback here if I'm thinking about this wrong. But the way I'm thinking about it, I can't really see a way around this without it being kind of clunky, right? Like, if we're sitting down in Lord of the Rings, it'd be really odd for someone to sit down and be like, oh, let's go over the thing we all believe cohesively and talk about the mythology that created this place, even though we all really know for sure every beat of it. Let's go? Okay. I think there isn't enough representation of ideas drawn from mythologies such as Mesopotamian, Mayan, and various African myths. There are some truly beautiful and terrifying things that exist in mythologies outside of the traditional European sphere of influence, and it would truly benefit the fantasy genre. So I've been made aware over the last year that this does exist as long as you start reading outside of the Western sphere of fantasy. Basically, if you just read non-European or American written fantasy, you'll find it. 
Um, so I recommend you do a little bit of research into so. Bam! There's some behind me. I have a gripe with modern authors who go, this religion is like Christianity, so it's bad, and people are bad for liking it. Generalized. I appreciate you saying generalized. It's like lazy morality projections from my view and does nothing but serve as a blatant break in the narrative for me. Having a religion be the villain is fair and narratively sound, but making that religion be Christianity with a rebrand slapped on it is just lazy, uninspired, and way too obvious a jab at a real life thing to be taken seriously in a story in my opinion. Hard disagree because I'm sorry. Well, one, a lot of these people are not talking about Christianity as a whole. Uh, the obvious example here would be Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials. I don't think reading that story at any point Philip Pullman is trying to say every aspect, every facet of Christianity is the problem. Instead, he's looking at these specific issues that organized religions, specifically Christianity, often deal with, corruption, power abuse, greed, things like that, basically human flaws, and taking them and putting them into the story and making them the focus point for this examination and critique of a religion. And again, as someone who's a huge history fan, I don't mean to take a shot at Christians, and this is where I'm going to go into the territory of like, I'm going to be offending some people. Y'all have been the baddies more often than you think. Uh, there's a lot of like, I've met in Christian people where I'm like, I'll pull examples of Christians doing some pretty awful stuff. Christianity being used to justify some awful stuff. And they're just like, wow, I didn't know about that. Or they'll just deny it happened, even though there's like firm proof. Of course, I don't mean to paint all religious people as responsible for this or all Christians as responsible for these horrible things, but to then say it's inappropriate or wrong for an author to use it when it's a humongous part of Western history. I find to be a bit absurd. And as someone who's like an outsider looking in, I'll agree there's probably more nuances and lines I'm not seeing that do justify like, hey, that wasn't our group of Christians, that was that group of Christians. But as someone as an outsider looking in, it's like there's been so many different groups of Christians that have done awful stuff. I find it completely fair for an author to go, I'm gonna take that group who did this horrible thing or is currently dealing with this problem and use it as a focus point for my narrative and then rebrand it to be an examination of the problem. Uh, and so I disagree in the sense that it's just pulling from real world history, just as George R. R. Martin does with War of the Roses or Rebecca Kwong is doing with nuances within Asian history. It's just kind of fair in my opinion. And I wouldn't say Rebecca Kwong is trying to paint all of the groups that she's pulling from for her story as evil. I would say she's just pulling specific horrific incidents that happened and kind of shining a spotlight and a critique on a lot of the corruptions and horrible things that happened. Same thing here with the religion. It's fair to do because there's stuff you can really pull from. Saying it's like, Overused, I guess, would be fair, but saying it's lazy or somehow like thinly veiled and unjustified is entirely inaccurate because it's definitely justified and it's it's as well veiled as any other real life inspiration in my mind. And saying jab at a real life thing that can't be taken seriously, okay, so you're just gonna take anything that's inspired from real life and have the same mantra of like, oh, it's too thinly veiled, so I can't take it seriously. To me, this just seems like you're a bit bothered by the fact that it's affecting directly a group you may be related to, or if you're not religious, maybe just re-examine your own sensitivities towards religion for some reason. And I also want to take one more issue with this thing where, and people are bad for liking it. I have very rarely seen an author go to that extreme. Usually they will even specifically put scenes in or have the nuance to say like, hey, there are followers of this who are great and awesome and lovely and they're fine. In fact, I can't think of a book that has a heavy critique of religions in this sense that doesn't take time to do that and show like there are followers who are good and that kind of undoes a lot of the issue you seem to have because they're specifically saying the followers aren't the problem. It's the corruption at the higher level. I just have an issue with the, but making that religion be Christianity with a rebrand slapped on it is just lazy. Cause to me, that's like specifically that. Would you say the same thing about Islam, Hinduism? I just don't feel like that would necessarily be the same case with the way you're phrasing it. And that is unfair. Ah, this one's gonna get some dislikes and backlash. I'm not sure how hot of a take this is, but I haven't seen many authors represent the differences in religions in the same region. If you look at history, it's very common for a single religion to be extremely varied, especially polytheistic religions. For example, if you look at Greek pantheon, people from city to city represented the gods differently and prioritized different gods and stories. The only thing that stayed consistent from city to city were some more basic ideas. It's still clearly the same religion, but the gods have different personalities and represent different aspects of whatever they are the god slash goddess of. I also have found the different things that influence said differences between religious representation of 
gods, goddesses, and morals to be equally as intriguing. Environment, resource, economy. Hinduism is another good example. I've seen authors dive into how religions vary from greater regions to other, i.e. country to country, but I haven't seen them focus on the smaller areas. Maybe I'm not well versed enough in fantasy, but I think that would be a very interesting aspect to flesh out. I actually completely agree with this one. That is absolutely true. I recently was watching a thing about how like once Greece and Egypt trade was like more frequented, they started having like hybrid temples where they would just be like, oh, these two gods are similar. Maybe they're the same thing. Let's combine them. Poof. Now you have a shrine to Apollo slash Ra or something like that, where they would just like mix and match and be like, ah, that's probably the same dude. That's a really interesting take on religion that I have never seen in a book where it's people just like, oh, we need to sit down and figure out we're different religions. These gods are probably just in different forms. Let's talk it out, boys and girls. That would be fascinating. Uh, I like this. That'd be pretty neat. It's kind of more of a story pitch idea again, but it's one that I agree. It's like, I haven't seen it before. And it would be an interesting like subversion of what you'd expect. You'd expect like two groups to meet and be like, you believe in something different? <gasps> Here's my pen and ink. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is a hot take because I've never heard anyone agree or disagree with it. I don't think just because you have mythology in your story, you need to confirm or deny whether or not it's true. I think a lot of fantasy authors feel the need to explicitly show us that the religions in their world actually exist. I don't think it usually hurts anything to do that. I just don't think you have to. Ah, I would say narratively, you kind of do at a certain point, right? Like, let's use another just obvious example of Gandalf. Like, yeah, we know everything that about him is true and it's explicitly shown to us. And if it wasn't, it would leave a lot of open-endedness and questions that would just feel like holes. It's like, oh, okay, this is true. He's using magic related to these things. Oh wait, you're telling us this isn't for sure true? Then where is he getting his magic? It's almost like if you look at things like an equation, which you do not have to, it kind of like pulls away because it's like, oh, you're fleshing out this grand mythology and mytho, well, now there's a hole. I think there's an approach to what you're talking about that could work. I'm not gonna deny that. Absolutely, the way you're talking about could work. It would just be very tricky. And you'd have to have that mindset kind of filling in everything around the religion you're then crafting for your world. Now, if you don't have things like magic systems that are directly being utilized by the people, this becomes becomes a lot easier. But if you're having mechanics of that religion result in physical manifestations within this planet or world, I don't know why I said planet, that absolutely works. Um, so yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's a pretty interesting take. And I'm not entirely sure how I would write that. That's curious to be like, I want to have a religion for my fantasy world and maybe fantasy elements around that religion, but not confirm it. This goes for historical fiction too, but I dislike how characters we're meant to relate with are broadly skeptical of all things superstitious in a medieval-ish setting. Historically, people who were skeptical of some superstitions often wholeheartedly embrace other magical beliefs that seem just as crazy when viewed through a modern secular lens. And yeah, while a noble-born or well-educated character probably wouldn't believe in gimmicks, snarks, and peasant folklore, they'd certainly believe in the tenets of whatever religion dominated their society. That could be a belief in miracles, witchcraft, divine rights of kings, etc. You don't have to go very far back in history to find that even the best educated people absolutely believed that sort of stuff. Agnostics less atheists were definitely a thing in pre-modern times, but they were so rare that whenever they pop up in a historically inspired fantasy setting, it takes me out of it a bit. There's agreement and disagreement here. It's a really interesting point and you're not wrong objectively at any point. I'm sure atheists and agnostic folk were not as common as they are today throughout history. But that being said, we don't know exactly how common they were because we weren't getting like detailed accounts of your average peasant's beliefs frequently. And I'm sure there was more often back in the day, total speculation for me, a greater fear around admitting to not being religious. So we don't know the exact percentages, right? Like we just don't know. Uh, but yeah, there, there is also truth to what you're saying here, where there is this consistent insistence within fantasy of having like a character be the focus and they are above some of the religious beliefs of the fantasy society that's being written. This does happen. And I know specifically about the tone you're talking about where it's like, they're above it all. This has been a thing in fantasy a bit, though often it's more just like, they don't believe in some of the misgivings about the religion and well, the truth of the religion they actually end up being a part of. Like there is still a religious thing in there because almost every fantasy world has a religion. You have to have your main character be right. But I would be, uh, curious to see what you're talking about. A more uh, honest take on like, no, our main character does believe in all these things that exist around the religion that aren't necessarily true. And that's actually a whole 
area that I feel like is deeply underexplored in most fantasy stories, epics, what have you, where you can have a solid religion that exists in the world, but then have an overlay around it of false beliefs that have just developed over time. Uh, that has not been as well explored as I would like to see, and I think actually would satisfy many of the points and complaints people have brought up in this very video. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head here. I just am not entirely sure on your last point, where I doesn't take me out of a story to have a character be agnostic or atheist, because I don't put into the past my own belief of whether or not like tons of atheists and agnostic type people existed because I'm sure that social pressures back then around faith are something I do not understand and no matter how much you read about it you're not going to completely understand because you have historical biases about who writes these things and you're not getting your average Joe Blow writing like a nuanced paper on <laughs> what his day-to-day -day life is and the social pressures of religion around him. Uh, that would be an interesting thing to come across though and you'd need multiple. You'd need like 40 from different regions. Now I'm trying to implement way too much in this. But yeah, good hot take. Don't know if it's an unpopular opinion, but I feel like the spiritual side of religion is rarely handled well in fantasy. It often feels like you've got either the neutral, here's a list of beliefs and a bit of mythology which people just believe, or authors make their preference quite obvious, meaning they can be quite preachy. There is never much exploration of why people actually believe or what moral consequences that has. To list some examples, from what I've read of Sanderson, it seems he just tries to be as inoffensive as possible. His religions are mostly just lists of rituals or dogmas. I think it's a bit unfair to say Sanderson's trying to be as inoffensive as possible. This is coming from someone who's been fairly critical of Sanderson recently in some ways, but I think it's not fair to say he's trying to be as inoffensive as possible. I think he just has a very specific way around developing religions that he likes to take, and that's just coming up with something that's completely original and not really pulling heavily uh, from things we know in, today, in today's world. Granted, he does pull from some things, there's, there's no question there, and I think he also has the added pressure of, you know, people are constantly saying like, oh, he's slipping Mormonism into his religions and beliefs in his books. And I'm like, where? Tell me where he's doing that. I have never seen that in anything I've read by him. Yeah, I feel like he has to just walk a fine line, but he still writes the things he wants to. I just, I think the word inoffensive is a bit unfair because like, was Tolkien trying to be offensive? I don't think so. He just, there's just a difference between pulling from directly and real world stuff and not. On the other hand of the spectrum, you got Pullman with his dark materials. I was waiting for this to be brought up, which might not shy away from some of the spirituality, but is quite clearly biased against the Christian church. I wouldn't like calling it a bias. Like, I don't know. He definitely was set out with an agenda, like, right? But he's not necessarily biased in a way because the things he's pointing out and attacking we know to exist in some capacity, whether you like to admit or not, within the institutions he's attacking. Bias applies in the sense that, yes, he has an agenda and he's exploring it well. But I wouldn't say that, you know, Lewis was biased when he wrote essentially like Chronicles of Narnia. To me, bias when it comes to writing fantasy, when they're creating this whole new world, doesn't necessarily apply. Maybe I'm being a little oversensitive, but I just, I really like to defend author's narrative intent, and Pullman is accomplishing narratively exactly what he wants to, just as well as Lewis is. Even someone like George R. R. Martin, who I consider a master of character work, kind of just ridicules the Church of the Seven in Song of Ice and Fire. He handles the old gods and the light gods a bit better, maybe, but you rarely get perspective of actual believers. Disagree a bit. I mean, many of the characters we follow are believers. They just don't talk about it. It kind of just falls in that problem I was talking about earlier, where like, your average person just not going to discuss faith in these books a whole lot. And there's less of an excuse for Martin, though. You are right in that sense, because there is religious conflict happening, and the discussion we get between these religions isn't as nuanced or well as explored as it certainly could be if you're looking for this type of thing. And then you get something like Rebecca Kwong's Poppy War. Religion is demoted into a magic system. Haven't read past Poppy War, so if it gets better in the later books, I wouldn't know. I think, yes, it gets better in the second book a bit. And I'm just saying all this as an atheist who dislikes any form of of organized religion. I enjoy reading all the examples I've given, but the religious stuff often bothers me. So I get all the complaints you have, and I'm being combative because this is a Let's Debate video and it's my job to be combative, so sorry if I come across too harsh. Um, but yeah, I think you have some ground to stand on in some of these points, but I, I, with a lot of these, my counter is just, but what was the author's narrative intent? 
And are they doing that well? You can criticize that you don't like their narrative intent, but you must at least recognize that they are framing the story or they're not taking the time to cover something because it just wasn't what their intent was too. Hot take, in fantasy worlds where the presence of a god slash gods is a certainty, religions do not exist. A D&D cleric isn't religious any more than a Microsoft employee is religious just because he has never met Bill Gates. It's just a boss employee relationship. Give prayer, get magic. It's a business transaction and not a religious <laughs> devotion. The closest in our world would be swearing our allegiance to a king, lord, or country. That's an interesting point, and I need time to think on that. <laughs> Don't make the religious folk the bad guys or the crazy, wacky, woo, the world's going to end people. I'm not religious, but it's still insulting to see. And also, focus on them more. Make them more defined and big. Why? I'm sorry, but why? Like, there's a thing where it's like you're trying to say it's insulting to your average everyday religious folk when I don't find it to be because your average everyday religious folk are not aligned with these crazy zealots. Just like I'm not aligned with these annoying, super anti-religious people just because I'm not religious necessarily. I think, you know, lumping in the extremes with the middle ground like you're doing here is actually kind of offensive to do because I actually know many people who are middle of the road religious who have a bigger issue with these zealots than I do because they make them look bad. Um, and there have been many real world examples, if you're going to be one of these people who says like authors should pull from real world all the time, of crazy religious zealots trying to bring about the end of the world or saying the world's going to end. And if there was grand magic in play, you bet these people would be trying to use it. So it's, it's okay to do in my opinion. And I know many religious people who are fine with it and some that have a problem with it, but saying like, don't do it ever, it's insulting isn't the case. If you want to write some nihilistic super science dude who's total logic, I don't find that to be offensive to me because I know it's not me. And I think people who are more middle of the road religion know that zealot is not them. Now, if you're deliberately in your narrative saying all religious people are like these zealots, all of them are horrible. I guess that's kind of something I'd have an issue with. Um, but again, I, I can't think of an example of that being done. Almost always the time and distinction is taken. But here's the hot take. You already just started with one. Religion should have more to do with the plot. What if a radical offset, this is just pitching a book again. <laughs> That's a book, and I'm, I, I would read it. If you write it, I will read it. Um, but that is a pitch for a book. So this is going to be the one that I think is probably gonna have the most heated comment section of any Let's Debate, in my uh, opinion, because there's obviously a lot of sensitivities around faith and belief. I am deeply respectful of people's beliefs in this world. My general personal philosophy on it is anyone who says they know 100% the truth Maybe needs to take a step back and think on things. So I don't think people on one extreme or the other have any superiority. I'm a very just observe and try to find truth in your day-to-day -day life person. I find this idea that people are putting forward where like you can't be critical of religion or you can't be super praising of religion to be unfair because we've seen almost all religions do good things in our history and we've seen almost all religions do bad things in our history. It's fine to pull from both. I do agree that there should be the nuance and time taken to say like not all religious people are crazy like this. There's just the people who make them all look bad or those who drive up the fervor in this unhealthy way. That, you know, just take the time to be like, there are people on this other side that are more, you know, in the middle and respectful of what they believe. But I can't think of a book that's being critical of faith that does not do that because I have a hard time thinking of any author who's that egotistical to do that and be like, and I'm going to insult every religious person by not taking the two seconds to point out the distinction there. Um, but I don't know, I'm maybe wrong here. People, I'm, I'm just hoping that we have a rather civil discussion continuing forward in the comments down below, but I'm trying to ask for civil discussion when it comes to the internet and faith, so good luck.